Breaking news right now, we're continuing to learn more details on the embattled Congressman George Santos, who is now in federal custody. We know he's facing fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and false statement charges. Let's get right out to News 12 Long Island's Caroline Flynn. She is outside the federal courthouse in Central Islip, where she has been throughout the morning covering this story. Caroline, what's the latest? Well, Rich, good morning. I can tell you, I just spoke with the U.S. Marshal's office here in Central Islip, and what they explained to me was that because this was an FBI arrest, Santos went in through a different entrance, that Marshal's entrance. That was how he got into the building without us seeing him. We have the public entrance right behind us here. They said that's pretty standard protocol when it comes to an FBI arrest, but if he is released today, we will see him walk out those doors. Now, when it comes to the charges he is facing, I want to break all of that down for you right now. There are 13 different charges, seven counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, one count of theft of public funds, and then there are two counts of making materially false statements to the House of Representatives. So again, a total of 13 different charges that he will be arraigned on this afternoon. Now, in the indictment, several pages long, there were some disturbing accusations that were made against him, including that during his first run for Congress, that was at the height of the pandemic, he allegedly applied for and received unemployment. Then during his second run for Congress, that was the one where he won, he allegedly pocketed campaign contributions and used that money to pay off personal debts and buy himself designer clothing. Now, of course, News 12 will be out here throughout the rest of the day for that arraignment. Again, it's expected to take place this afternoon. We have reached out to the congressman's office, to the congressman. So far, there are no comments from his camp about these charges. I know our Antoinette Biorti is in the plain view community getting reaction from some of his constituents. Antoinette, what are you learning from them? I know a lot of them felt this was a long time coming. Absolutely. The news of these criminal charges, of course, has a lot of people in this area buzzing. They're all talking about it. It has a lot of people feeling relieved, yet they still feel a sense of being unrepresented. For the past five months, people living in this district tell me that the indictment is bittersweet. They feel a sense of relief, but at the same time, they want to know who is going to represent them in Congress and what's next. Right now, residents say they still feel like they don't have a voice. Plus, many people living here, like Jonathan Rudis, a senior citizen from Woodbury, says he needs someone to help him with issues relating to seniors. He feels like he has no one to turn to. My reaction is finally. Uh, I'm very disappointed that uh, he's still going to be representing us, that they can't expel him from Congress until he's... Uh, you know, convicted is what McCarthy said. Um, on Long Island, we have a lot of issues, and we need somebody representing us. And clearly, this guy is not going to represent us properly. And we will continue to talk to residents and people in this district throughout the day, listening to their concerns and what they have on their minds uh, concerning this latest news here. In plain view, Antoinette Biorti, News 12, Long Island. Rich? Antoinette, I don't think it's going to be difficult to find people who want to talk about this today. Everybody's talking about this story. Thank you very much. All right, we're getting a whole lot of reaction on all of this this morning. We're going to show you some of those comments we're seeing on social media right now. This is from Hakeem Jeffries, the Democrat from Brooklyn who leads the Democratic caucus. You see he wrote, the party of George Santos and Marjorie Taylor Greene cannot be trusted to govern. Not now, not ever, says the congressman there. Congressman Dan Goldman is another Democrat from Brooklyn. Uh, he's also a former prosecutor, federal prosecutor. He wrote, now that Santos has been indicted, it is incumbent on Speaker McCarthy to eliminate the stain of Santos on this hallowed institution by removing him from Congress immediately. Remember, Caroline reported earlier this morning that Speaker McCarthy is not inclined to do that. He has said he's going to let this process play out, innocent until proven guilty, and then if at some point the congressman is convicted, only then would he ask him to resign. 
an expulsion vote is unlikely, even though that's what Goldman and many others are calling for. This is a comment here from a Republican member of Congress, Tony Gonzalez of Texas, who says the people of New York's third district deserve a voice in Congress. George Santos should be immediately expelled from Congress and a special election initiated at the soonest possible date. We've heard others like Congressman Nicola Loda here on Long Island uh, talk about Santos, call for him to resign, Anthony Esposito has done the same. How about this from Kellen Curry? So Kellen Curry is a Republican challenger to Santos. He's already announced he's going to primary Santos. He immediately put out this statement. You see some of that there. He says it's a stark reminder that we deserve leadership we can believe in. And I'm just continuing to watch Twitter now. And Manu Raju, the reporter from CNN, writing about Congressman Nick Lalota. He just interviewed him in the hallways of Congress. He said, this is what the quote is from Lalota. I think he needs to go right away, and I hope that he resigns. I want to concentrate on things like the border, China, and debt. He's a complete embarrassment. The nation's focusing on solutions that matter, not George Santos. We reached out to the Nassau Republican Party as well for comment on this. Remember the chairman, Joe Cairo, many of the Republican elected leaders in Nassau County, in the towns and villages as well, have already said they will not back Santos for re-election. They've long called on him to resign. We're waiting to hear back for a new statement now from the chairman, Cairo, but you would expect more of the same. Now, later on, we're going to talk to Mike Dewidziak. He's a political consultant and James Sample, who's a Hofstra law professor, about what all of this means now moving forward, both from a legal aspect and on the political front. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a break from all of this. Let's turn to the weather. The weather is nice today. That's a good thing. Meteorologist Rich Hoffman is here with a lot to look forward to, Rich, today and then tomorrow as well. Yeah, and it's only getting warmer around the island going through the next 24 hours. Enjoy that sunshine. The dry conditions are a little bit of a haze out there thanks to those wildfires in Canada bringing us some smoke. And you can see Riverhead, the dry conditions. Temperatures a little bit above average today and about 10 degrees above average for tomorrow. Here's your view outside our Bethpage studio. You can see the dry conditions here. The trees are in bloom. And with that warm weather condition, here we go. Your allergy report, grass pollen moderate to high, tree pollen high. Weeds are coming up as well. We're looking at dry weather conditions, and there's not much wet weather coming our way in our 10-day forecast. Take a look at this as we go towards this afternoon. Garden City will top out to a high close to around 70 degrees for today. Around 4 o'clock, 67, 62 degrees at 7 p.m. Clear skies for your sunset with that wind from the south-southwest at around 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now, on your Thursday, take a look at this. In Glen Cove on Thursday, lots of sunshine, temperatures in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees, and we're dry into Thursday evening. Our next threat of wet weather will be some light nuisance showers coming in by Friday night. We'll see a couple of showers in here on Saturday. So this blue H, that's high pressure. That's our friend sunshine and warm weather moving in the next couple of days and going through our future cast. Notice the dry conditions through this evening. Your evening rush hour, lunch hour, we're dry. We're looking great overnight. Mostly clear skies. Temperatures will be in the 40s and 50s. Now heading into your Thursday, you're going to notice most of it's dry and sunny. Starting off your morning hours, a pretty nice sunrise coming your way with temperatures in the 40s and 50s. Thursday afternoon, sunshine. Now away from the south shore, temperatures around 75 to 80 at the immediate south shore and east end. Temperatures tomorrow, 70 to 75. Going towards your weekend, here's Saturday. Clouds are around. There will be the threat of a few spotty showers Saturday through Saturday night. Early Sunday morning before 9 a.m., some clouds, and then break out to some sunshine during the day on Sunday for Mother's Day with rain coming in by Monday. Here's what we have the rest of the day. 60s to low 70s, mostly sunny. It's mild tonight, mostly clear skies. Sunset now is at 758. 40s to low 50s tomorrow. Look at these numbers. 70s to near 80 degrees. It's warm tomorrow. Going into the weekend, warm Friday, some showers around Saturday, sun and clouds for Mother's Day, dry at 68.
Do you know a local high school athlete who also excels in the classroom? Scan the QR code or go to News12.com to nominate the next News 12 Long Island Scholar Athlete Award. You can help these students get the recognition they deserve. Only on News 12 Long Island. Local matters.